Okay, guys, it's Anything Goes Saturday, and you know I have got to cut this wood before the end of the month. Plane it, so that's what I'm working on. The only th difference with today's video is uh, I've been getting a lot of emails about how to use this planer exactly. So I'm going to explain it detail by detail. Alright, first of all, um, if you look, this is a 1x6 piece of red oak. <clears throat> and if I look down at this way, now I don't know if you can tell, but it's got a little cup in it, okay, in this direction. In other words, the high part of the cup is on this side, the low part is on that side. Now, what I do with these is I turn these so that the high sides, the sides are up. So in other words, the bottom of the cup is down. And I make my first pass through the planer. What that does is it gives me a flat piece here and here. They're flat with one another, and they're going to hold the board flat as it goes through the planer. Okay, so let's do that first. I'm going to put it through the planer. I'm not going to make you listen to the noise. I'll put it through the planer. I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll show you where I'm going to go from there. This board has been totally unplaned at this point. Okay, so you should be able to see there that this is smooth and that smooth. Not only are they smooth, but they're smooth to one another because the blade is flat and as long as the board runs through there, this is going to be flat. Now this does not mean that these two flat edges are perfectly parallel with the opposite side because sometimes you get boards that are twisted, cupped, all kinds of stuff. But at least we got something to go by here, okay? What we're after is six inches of a smooth board on both sides so what I do here is I just I normally brush this off now there's hardly anything on this but I would brush it off and then take a good look at it so let me just take it and put it over here and then I'll show you what we have here a little better maybe so if you look at that all the way down here you can probably see it up there better all the way down it's nice and flat on both sides okay so now that I have that and I know that I'm fairly close in the middle this is not a bad cup now what I do is I take the board and I turn it over so I turn it over and that is what I'm gonna put through the planer now so this is the high part of the cup so when you when I put this through you're gonna see the middle get plain but not the edges and then I continue with that so I turned it over already. Let me run it through the planer and I'll show you what happens. Now, what I'm also do is I push down on this to make it flat on the stainless steel, okay? And then I bring this down a little bit. Now, this thing can only cut about an eighth or so. You can see it's away a little bit there, it's away there, but it's pretty much touching in the middle. So let me start it and run through. I'll get back to you. Okay, now this board did not have a real bad cup in it, so there's places where it's planed all the way across, like right here, for instance. But it's not planed here, and it's not planed here. So what I want to do is I want the whole board planed on the high side before I go back to the low side, to the, um, you know, the uh, inner curve. Okay, so let me put this through here again. You can see at the top there where it didn't get planed here and here but it's planed in the middle so being that we have those two edges on each side on the bottom that are holding this thing like a railroad track okay now we can put it through here again with the curved part the out, out curve up again so let me put it through and I'll show you what it looks like and at the same time we're looking at this we want this to go down to one, uh, three quarters of an inch and no more than three quarters okay so I have about three-eighths there yet that I can do. Okay, so now this board has gone through the planer a second time on this face. And I'm looking at the face and I'm feeling it to find out if it's been planed all the way down. And from what I can see there, it has been planed, except for this very edge right here. So, because I have more than an inch of wood left, I can run this through there again. 
and I'm gonna run it through again because I want the board to be as flat as I can. Now you'll notice there's no snipe here as well, okay? Just because this board's fairly flat and it's going through the planer pretty nice. So I'm gonna pull this back, okay? I'm gonna pull it back. And then we'll run it through the planer again so we can get this little bit here that's not plain. There's a small spot there, about that big, that's not plain. I want it all plain before I roll it over to the front. Okay, so I ran it through there the second time and I'm satisfied with what I have here. I have a nice flat board all the way down. Now let me explain something else before I go any further to the opposite side. When you look at the board in this direction, if you look down the board and you see that there's fat spots, thin spots and all, you can expect the planer to hang up on a thick spot and you may have to relieve some tension on the, the planer uh, wheel. So when you're doing that, that board cannot be considered planed. You have to be able to run the board completely through the planer without touching the handle. And then you've got a nice straight plane. So once the plane has already, once the board has run through the planer and it's been flat and the entire board is surfaced, you can consider that finished. Now we have to do the other side, okay? And we still have a little bit of a uh, quarter of an inch, not a quarter of an inch, but a little bit left in order to do this. So we're going to take what we have left there and come down here and try and get this center straightened out on this board. So let me put it through again. I'm going to crank the handle down a little bit. You can see there's some um, play there. Not a lot, but some. And we're going to go from there. Okay, so here's what we have here. We've got a nice, clear piece of wood. This is top of the line. There's no reason why you can't get $8 a board foot for this. So this is a 1x6. So you're looking at basically uh, $4 a foot. So four times eight is $32. This thing should be $32, okay, if you know how to figure board feet. It's all planed nicely. Now the edge isn't plain, but usually people that are gonna use buy red oak are using it to make something and they usually do their own planing. But I have no way of planing the edges. I can only cut them. I could do it with a hand plane, but I'm not gonna fool with that. What I'm just saying, that's the kind of money you're talking. You can, you can um, take a little off of that if you want to, if somebody's buying a lot or whatever, that's up to you. But that's where we stand with the board. So this board is considered clear and it's plain. So now I look over here and I see I'm right at three quarters of an inch, okay? So since I'm right at three quarters, the board's totally plain on the faces. It's going over on the pile. Okay, so what we have here now is this is basically a 1x5 and it has a very little crown in it. The crown is, th these are high rails on this side. Here and here is a little bit of a high rail. It's very hard to tell that there's a crown in it. There's a little bit of bow in it. Uh, as far as the cut goes, the board's the same size all the way down. So this should come out really nice as far as a clear board goes. So I'm going to do the same thing through the planer. I'm going to put the cupped edge so that the cup is uh, facing down, my two points are facing up because I want those to make the railroad tracks that I need to be able to run this thing through the planer nicely. So let me do that and then I'll get back. <coughs> okay, excuse me. Now, you can see that I have the planer snug against the guard that's there to guide, okay? And I'm at a little here above an inch in thickness. So I don't have a whole lot to play with. I can't make too many passes, especially a full turn. One full turn all the way around is an eighth of an inch. A half a turn is a sixteenth. You can go by that as a guide on this, this machine. I don't know if they're all like that, but that's how this one is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this on and run it through on one side, see how it comes out. So I put this board through there, and the nice thing about this is the cup was so small that the planer uh, totally planed the entire surface. So now I can turn it around and work on that side until I'm down to three quarters of an inch. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip this over, okay? Now I have the rough wood there, rough cut, and I'm gonna work this through there until it's down to three quarters. 
so if you look there you can see that it can go down a little bit so I'm going to go down a full turn that's an eighth of an inch turn it on and let it go through okay guys so I put this went through the planer I had to put it through three times but if you look at this you can see a little bit of white edge down there and a tiny little bit of wane but here's the good thing it's all on the bottom it's not more than half the board and this side of the board is very clear okay so this is what you would call a top of the line oak board there's nothing wrong with this board okay this board is the kind of wood you take and put and put together to make table tops or aprons or whatever you want to do but I'm just saying nice very nice wood this will stain up nice it, it, it's just ready to go so that's how you like I said go through the process of getting yourself a three-quarter inch board that's worth something if you're not willing to do this then do what I do and throw the pile that throw the pieces that are not worth anything to you over on the pile and cut them up for fire firewood now you can see I uh, have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twenty thirty four there's about sixty or seventy pieces of wood there and this couple of pieces if I want to cut them up and try and use them I will I put the piece that was here over there I don't know if you were watching the video the other day but the thing is is I don't really want to be fooling with this stuff so I'll cut that up into firewood something like this is choice this is the kind of stuff I like all right I like this personally to be able to use it on making furniture and anybody who knows anything about making furniture would also want to use this because you can put that white side where the outer wood is down on your furniture and hide that so anyway guys like I say that's how you go about doing that now I'll show you some other stuff about planing just to give you an idea of what I go through to be able to get to a good board all right guys so what I'd like you to look at here is if, if you have a hard time determining the where the um, the bend in the board is you can see that it's not touching here it's not touching there but it is touching here that means that to put this board through the planer what we ought to do is turn it over and put it through first it's a nice looking piece of wood there's no crack in it there's we have a little knot here that might show up but nonetheless we're going to try and do this so we get a nice board out of it so again I'm going to take this board out I'm going to turn it over because I want the um, high sides to get plain first and if I put it in there now you can see that it's touching on both sides right there but it's not touching in the middle that's what I want to plane first okay this red oak is beautiful wood and it's worth good money but you got to take care of it now if you take a good look at this board you'll see in the middle it missed here it hit here and here but in the middle it missed but it basically did a good job going through there here's a missed spot in the middle there's also one right down there where I'm pointing so this does have to go through again on this side but I'm not going to do that right away like I said before I'm going to take this board and turn it over I want to use those two flat edges on both sides here as a guide to, to uh, make the board follow the, the uh, stainless steel plate that's in there in the planer so it keeps the board flat that's what I'm after so now we're going to plane this side until it's perfectly smooth and then we'll turn it over and take them two knots or those two little spots out now again take a good look at that you can see in the middle where it was planed where it's sort of shiny the edges were not planed it was planed here but not all the way through down in here planed in the middle but not all the way through now here's the problem here we've already we're down we only have about an eighth of an inch left to be able to cut to uh, plane this board so we need to get it as planed as closely as we can you know to be in finish because this is um, a decent piece of wood here I mean if I cut this off at six inches it's clear uh, or I mean at six foot it would be clear but I'm gonna run it through again with this side facing up because you can see it's like clear in here but then not right here so we want to get the board clear before we get too too uh, far gone with it all right now here's what I did to get through this thing 
I only cranked the handle down half of a turn. I went from here to here. So that's a sixteenth of an inch. I have another sixteenth left on there, but I don't want to use it on this side of the board. I want to flip this board over now, okay, so that I can get the, the uh, little spots out. There's one here, and there's one here at this end that I want to try and get them out with that next sixteenth of an inch. And then I've got basically a clear, beautiful board here. So I'll only be going down a sixteenth, so that's a half of a turn, okay? That's all I can go down, because I'm down to one and a quarter, or three quarters of an inch now. Okay, so there you go, finished planes one by eight. Now this has a little bit of a knot in here. It's not bad enough that you can't fill it with something, but the board, uh, that's about a foot there, so you're looking at a seven foot piece. So for a one by eight, you know, if you think about it, a four dollars for a board foot for, or a foot for a one by six, you can figure this thing's about six dollars for every foot of board that's here. So six times seven would be forty-two dollars. And that's how I look at this, and that's how I price this, and that's how I price wherever I put it. If I build something out of it, I price the furniture according to that price plus my labor. So anyway, that's how you do it. The other thing that I want you to know is when you're stacking. When you're stacking the board, you've got to have it supported. Now you can see this one sticker's off a little bit. The stickers should be in line with one another. They should be over top of the 4x4s that are holding the bottom up and just keep putting nice flat boards in there. If you have a board that is um, already bad looking, then don't keep it. Get rid of it. Use it for firewood. Or if you can rip it down and get the cup out of it if it's bad, then do that. But try and put nice boards in there and you'll end up with nice boards coming out. Now if you look over here, you can see that some of those boards, the white ones there anyway, some of those boards have cups in them, okay? Now, they're gonna have to be dealt with. Whether I can get that cup out or not, I may not be able to. So, again, that's what I'm talking about, you know, when you take it then and throw it on the scrap pile. But anyway, so far we've been, I'm very happy with the amount of nice looking boards I've gotten out of here. So I'm gonna just keep going. Now what we have here is this is a one by seven. And if you look at it real close, there's a small knot in this one, just like it was in the other one. Um, if you look at this, it's a pretty clear board, not perfectly clear. But if you look here, you see these black marks, the planer stop planing and it starts to heat up so you get a little bit of burnt there, okay? You don't want that in your board, you want the board to be nice. What happened is, this board was a certain size all the way through there and then it sort of got thick on this end for some reason. Probably because the saw blade was getting dull on the saw. That's usually what happens. But anyway, we're going to put that through the planer one more time and get that nice and planed. Otherwise, it pretty much is planed all the way down, but I want this out of there because you can feel a little bump in there. Okay guys, so now this 1x7 went through the planer. You can see up at the very end there, there's a little bit of uh, wane was up in there, but it's uh, just a small amount. But nonetheless, I would figure that this is a seven foot board and I would call this $8 a board foot. Now there's a little knot in here and I dicker with people. If they come here and they know what they're talking about, I'll know it in a minute and then I'll you know give them the discount that they may need to be able to work with. But for right now, I just think to myself, for Red Oak, $8 a board foot. Now while I'm unloading it off the trailer, I'll be putting it in certain places where I know the good wood is at. And that's what you need to do to be able to make yourself money at this. But this is the time consuming part. Um, I do want to get another planer. I have a planer from Grizzly that I have in the garage, but I like using that for making uh, either molding or smaller things. But this one here, I would really like to be able to replace with a nice industrial planer that'll cut me the, you know, three-eighths of an inch or whatever I need right away rather than having to go through a couple of times. But, you know, you do what you can do and that's all there is to it. I, I tried this and I'm not unhappy with it. I, I feel like it's a, it was a good deal, this Porter Cable, and it's doing the job that I need. 
this is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of around oh I don't know 12,000 board feet that I have put through this planer now this morning just so you know I swapped the blades now what that what I mean is I flipped the blades around this had the blades on this machine have two cutters on them they're one on each side so all I got to do is flip it around and it was a good cutter yet it hadn't been used so I'm gonna put that in there and then I'll take this in and sharpen it later okay guys I hope that this video is a lot more helpful than some of the just watching videos I made those other videos because I really want you to know how much work is in this a lot of times you hear people say oh I'm gonna get that so I can have nice boards and then when they start doing the work they realize oh I shouldn't have done this I should just go buy the board it's okay if you're if all you need is a small amount of boards go buy them but if you need a lot of wood like I need wood to do build all the furniture for the house up there that's a different story I could use this for flooring I can use it for trim I can use it for furniture and that's what I will be doing that's what I plan on doing with most of this wood but I do have buyers that come here on a regular basis picking things up okay not a lot but small stuff I also have a floor guy that makes wood flooring and he'll buy all the red oak I can uh, cut for him so I'm not worried about it I just haven't been cutting it for someone else I'm mostly cutting it for myself right now have a good one guys